So let me quickly go over the sample data sets. So you have a sense of what is there. And you see, I opened the community areas and it's there in my recent uh, columns. So the next time you just click on that and it opens up. Now, one thing, and I'll go over it. One thing I, uh, once you pick a sample data set that you like, you should save it to a working directory because then you can manipulate it. You know, these are sample data sets. We protect them. We don't want you to start messing with them, right? So if you do things to these data sets, um, you can't save it. So you can you can do it, but then it's just in memory. And once you close the program, it's gone. So that's not a good result if you want to work with this later. So I will show you how you save one of these sample data sets into a working directory that you can use for your own work. And then because it will be in here, from then on, you don't actually have to find go and find a file anymore. You just click on the recent one and it pops up and you can work with it, okay? So what are these sample data sets? So all of these are also used in the textbook and described in the textbook. Mo many of these have actually been used in actual empirical work that has been published in journal, journal articles and so on. So oops, this, this is the one we just saw. This is a bunch of um, socioeconomic correct characteristics such as uh, age distribution, poverty, crime, things like that for community areas in Chicago. The uh, next one, there's 11 of them. This, These are the locations of uh, carjackings over, uh, I think, let me see, let me make sure what I did here. Yeah, in 2020. So this is 1,412 reported carjackings in Chicago in uh, 2020. Now, um, <clears throat> there's something not quite right about this map. And uh, I don't know if you already had the chance to look at the How to Lie with Maps book, um, but this is in there. So just take a look at this map and think about what might be wrong with it. The data are correct. The data are the location as recorded by the police department where the carjacking happened. Like, you know, 405 Hyde Park Avenue. That then gets translated into a specific set of coordinates that's called geocoding. And those points, I told you, once you have X and Y, we're in business, those points are shown here. There's no context? Correct, there's no context. But there's a more narrow technical issue. There's no scale? There's no scale. And also, these carjackings are very small locations. These points, if you have, once you have the scale, they actually correspond to half a city block or two city blocks. So they show way more density than there actually is. And in fact, um, let me see if I can do this. Yeah. So this, I right clicked on the little icon and I'm gonna change the point radius and I'm gonna make it smaller. And now it looks much less dense. It is not, it isn't much less dense. It looks much less dense because the size of the point is much smaller. And, um, one of my other classes, I show an example of foreclosures 
in Chicago. And foreclosure, that's a house. It's not bigger than a house. And it is a map that is all red. It's like all of Chicago has been foreclosed on, which is simply not true. It's because the size of the little square used to denote a house is too big. And so this is one of the principles in good map making is that you don't want to create the wrong impression. You know, it's not like there's carjackings all over the place in Chicago. In fact, it's very concentrated in specific areas, but you can't tell because one, you don't have a scale. And also you do, because you don't have a scale, you don't know how big these points are. And so this is something, um, it's an aside, but something to keep in mind. Um, so this is the only point data set I have, and we won't actually be using it. This is um, Chicago again, socioeconomic determinants of health. The, this is as the census tract level, the data are for 2014, um, 791 census tracts. So it has thing like, things like uh, different disease predominances and then uh, income per capita, uh, high education level, uh, proficiency of English, things like that. Uh, typical socioeconomic characteristics that you can then um, relate to specific health outcomes. This was part of an actual study that was looking at uh, spatial discrepancies in health outcomes and what might be the drivers of that. So, um, oops, what am I doing here? Then um, the next data set is um, for Brazil, the state of Sierra. I, I know I'm not pronouncing this right, but you know, I, my Portuguese isn't that great. Um, and it's uh, socioeconomic data from the Brazilian urban census and also prevalence of uh, Zika and microcephaly. Those are two diseases that are spread uh, by mosquitoes. And again, spatial randomness, every area should have its same share and it's not so. Why is it not so, right? And of course, your immediate answer is because there's more mosquitoes in some places than other places. And that would be one answer. There's other answers as well. So. This um, has all these variables. The, we have, um, this is Mexico, Oaxaca. This is state in the south of Mexico. And these are um, 570 municipios. They're like county type size. And these are different indicators of economic development. So all kinds of things for different years um, things like schooling, employment, uh, income levels, population change. Um, the interesting thing about this particular state, Oaxaca, is it's very mountainous. And there is a clear differentiation. I mean, the, the villages in the mountains are very remote. And so this uh, data set spans a number of years and you can see the evolution over the years, both in the valley as well as in the mountain ranges. There's even data on the use of personal computers and things like that in there. So it's it's real Brazilian census data. And one of my students used this in her thesis, in her master's thesis. Um, then um, this is another one. I, I know some of you are interested in banking or maybe it's in the other class, I can't remember. Um, these are actual community banks. So these are not the big commercial banks. These are the local banks in the Italian bank system. There's different kinds of banks and they're regulated slightly differently. And these are actual financial characteristics for each of these banks. 
And the research question there is, <clears throat> is there some clustering going on? Are banks that are closer together more competitive and therefore better performing than those who are pseudo-monopolies and are further removed from the others? And this, again, is a real paper that was published that I did with some colleagues from Italy. Um, and um, let's see, spirals we won't use. That is uh, a classic example. Um, there's another one called Swiss cake. These are classic examples from data science that don't follow a linear pattern. I mean, the spirals are clustered by the spirals. Uh, most clustering techniques don't know how to deal with this because these are nonlinear patterns in the data. Spectral clustering, which is a specialized method, can deal with this. So um, I have this in here to illustrate uh, techniques in my uh, clustering book. This is uh, an old favorite of mine. This is a historic data set from the mid 1800s in France. It um, was put together by a sociologist called Gary. And it is one of the first examples of using a map. I mean, of course, not the Geoda map, but his map in his book. Uh, to depict the spatial distribution of economic, socioeconomic data, demographic data. So it has data on literacy, on age, on crime, different kind of crime, and, and stuff like that. It's a nice data set because it's just big enough, 85 departments, to do some interesting analysis, but it's also not too big. I mean, once you get you know, 500 or 600 observations like the Oaxaca one, maps become a little challenging to interpret. You need a big screen, you know. Uh, on a laptop, it could be quite challenging. Then um, we have U.S. homicides, which is a uh, in there for legacy purposes. It's used, it's county data for the U.S., with homicide information and uh, brace yourself for 1960, 1970, 1980, and 1990. So this is all well before your time. Just think of it as historical data. Uh, when we actually used it, it was not historical, but um, it's a good data set uh, to illustrate uh, clustering and specifically differentiation between say the Midwest and the South and the coasts in the in the US. I mean, if you're not familiar with US geography, you know, don't worry about it. It's just uh, the fact if, I mean, what I like to say is if you're from Mars, Geoda will help you learn the geography of a place that you're studying because it brings out, if you start mapping some of these things and using some of these cluster techniques, right away, the coasts pop out. The coasts are different from the middle. And in the middle, the upper Midwest is different from the Southeast. And so these kind of broad patterns, even if you know nothing about the geography of the country, they pop out. And that is the power of exploratory spatial data analysis, that these patterns come out even uh, when you know nothing about the the topic that you're studying. Then uh, just a couple more. And I, I'm doing this to give you a sense. Of course, you can use your own data if you have them. Don't start collecting data at this point. But if you have something ready to go, by all means. But otherwise, pick one of these. These are some classic data. They're not that good for um, the stuff we will be doing because they're points. This is a, a very old data set with house sale prices in Baltimore. It's used in several papers in the literature. That's why we have it. Uh, it's totally dated. The other one is even more dated. It's house prices in, uh, keeps doing this, in Boston, also used in some classic papers. And then the last one is, um, and these are all still in there because 
they used to be part of uh, the sample data sets. This is New York um, uh, subsets of boroughs. There's 54 of them, 55 of them. And these are a bunch of socioeconomic data that were uh, collected by uh, a center at NYU. So this again is a little bit dated now. I think it's from the early 2000s, but it's it's an interesting data set because again, if you're from New York, I don't have to tell you this, but New York is very stratified. It's very structured spatially. You know, Manhattan is very different from the rest of, the rest of New York. If you don't know this, this will show you. It will pop out and you, the question you ask, well, why is this the case? Why isn't Manhattan just like everything else? It's not. There's structure there. There's a reason for it. So these are the um, different data sets. By all means, explore them. Um, see what strikes you, what, what kind of uh, subject is more interesting to you, or pick your own data. If you're going to pick your own data, run it by me. Okay, I want to make sure that you can do what you want to do. Okay, so let me. Any questions at this point? So you can you have these built-in data sets. Then you can also go to the Geoda Center. I showed you the link uh, on Monday. There's a whole data set subset where you can again browse it. And there's some descriptions, and you can pick one of those as well. So, you know, uh, the sky's the limit. And I mean, there's, I think there's close to 100 different data sets. So you really can, all kinds of different topics, housing, environment, politics, you know, different.